And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the... What is that weird... Listen, bro. I am... Si you're talking. <laughs> bro, what I don't want to interrupt, so I'm going to be like, yo, you know what? What's up, guys? Bro, you can just... Like, what... <laughs> Bro, what the hell is that? What do you want me to do? Bro, man, you just threw me off with that fucking <laughs> patheticness. Yo, guys, it's Money Monday. Today we're going to talk about not living paycheck to paycheck, man. Besides yes. fresh is gayness. Let's get into it. Let's go. All right, we are back, We're man. back. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Shit Podcast, man. It's Monday, Monday, man. We got a, today, a, a very important topic today. Yes. Stop living paycheck to paycheck. goddamn paycheck, man. Mm -hmm. But um, before we get into that, number one, rumble.com slash fresh and fit. We're live on Rumble right now, guys. Rumble.com slash fresh and fit. For some of you guys that are wondering, bro, it gets crazy on there. You hear, like, Fresh makes fun of the girls. He be telling girls that they're retarded and shit. It's crazy, bro. <sighs> I've never seen this side of Fresh. Rumble Fresh is a whole other side. That's um, it, man. Because I know it's free, yeah. and I know it's also was like unfiltered, so I can say whatever. Yeah. And most people don't watch Rumble, so it's exactly. Fine. So yeah, man. If you guys want to go ahead and see Fresh Now Stutter, check us out on Rumble. Okay. Sheesh. And then, um, yeah, and and it just it just gets wild, bro. We don't have to worry about censoring anything. It's it's awesome, and we can say certain words that we would never be able to say here, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Uh, also, guys, check us out on freshfit.locals.com, guys. Uh, we're building it up. As you guys know, we're no longer on – well, we're still on Patreon, but we're migrating over. So if you guys want to go and get behind-the-scenes content, go ahead and check us out at freshfit.locals.com. All the Patreon content is on Locals right now. Shout-out to Mo for uploading it there and putting it there for y'all. Yeah, so all so, our old videos are there as well. Yeah. So instead of going all the way down to Patreon, to the old videos, they're going to be up on Locals right there for you. So there yeah. you go. Uh, and then also, guys, if you guys want to check us out and listen to us on audio, we're on Megaphone, okay, man? Uh, we have two different channels. we got a Fresh Fit one and a Fresh Fit After Hours one. We're no longer an anchor, as I said before, so you ain't going to find us on Spotify or any of that other stuff. We are on Megaphone, guys, so check Only. us out over there, all right? If you guys want to listen to us on audio, just make sure, especially nowadays, to wear headphones, because if you don't, we say some crazy shit on Rumble. The first, Asagini. The first second... We got on Rumble. This dude, Chris, dropped the N-bomb. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> he was so excited. I was hey. just like, what the hell? That's the Opalaka coming out. That's the Opalaka, Opalaka. Coming out. Yeah, with the ER. Anyway, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was like kid, kids in the candy store. We were going nuts uh, first time on Rumble. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, we've been, we've been, had to, we were able to finally unleash. Also, guys, check us out on Discord. Discord.gg Discord slash Fresh Fit, man. Uh, yeah, to talk to a bunch of our supporters from different parts of the world. Then also get the merch, FreshFitPodcastStore.com. Um, and then go ahead and check us out also, most importantly, on Fresh Fit Clips, guys. Let's get that channel to 500,000 subscribers. Minimum. Please, because you guys are watching that channel, but not subscribing to that goddamn channel. 75% of people that watch that channel are not subscribed to the channel, and it's freaking annoying. So go and like the videos and subscribe to the goddamn channel. 500k on the way. 500k on the way, man. Let's go. We got to um, flex on our haters. All right, guys. Vlog channel is up. Listen, I was sick this week. I'm not going to lie. I didn't make too much content, but vlog drop in tomorrow. Once again, guys, 200K on the way. We're doing live streams as well. We got guests coming on Tuesday, I believe, which is tomorrow. So check it out, guys. 200K on the way. Let's go. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. By the way, man, last night I got to meet. And if you guys are watching my channel, man, I go live sometimes. I talk, I just, I talk a lot of shit. But I mentioned, man, one of my goals is to meet Skepta from the UK, bro. So last night, I'm chilling with Trap Star people from the UK. Huge man over there. Awesome guys. My guy Rory as well from Barbados. And I meet Skepta for the first time, man. Cool Perfect. ass dude, man. Uh, good energy. Uh, very to himself. But you know what? I respect it. And uh, hopefully we can get him on the podcast soon. Uh, pure vibes. You know, top level SK. Shout out to him, man. And that was a great experience. And I posted on Instagram. There you go. Ha! Legendary, bro. Legendary. Come on, man. First sound like a fan. But anyway, uh, guys, <laughs> check me out, Feta1811. As you guys know, I do reactions to criminal cases. 
Um, the last one I did was I did uh, Shanquella Robinson. I went ahead and covered that case. I went over the misinformation, the real information. I explained exactly how it works when you got someone who's wanted in other countries, how the extradition process works, how getting someone arrested in another country works, etc. Because I've actually done those cases myself where I've extradited people from other countries. So I went into detail about how it's actually done and what's going on, what's true, what isn't, and separating fact from fiction. Also, this Thursday or potentially Friday, I'm dropping the Zodiac Killer. You guys have been asking for this serial killer for the longest time, literally since I started the goddamn channel. He's the most famous serial killer in American history. He was never caught, went crazy throughout the late 60s and 70s, killing people, sending police codes, telling them, hey, you want to find me? You got to you know, crack this code. Some of the codes didn't get cracked until 2020, uh, damn near 40, 50 years later, man. And uh, he went wild all over California. So um, you know, allegedly 37 confirmed kills, but we know that that there's five. So I'm going to go ahead and cover the Zodiac Killer. We're going to go over the case, the murders, the potential suspects, the evidence. It's going to be probably the most thorough breakdown of the Zodiac Killer on the fucking internet, guys. So gonna, why do they call him the Zodiac Killer? Uh, well, there's a couple theories for that, but the big one is is that he would use codes, right? After he murdered a couple people, he would send the police and the um and the news. Uh, codes and then people would have to crack it and it would just have a special message in there for them. Oh, I thought because he was a Taurus or a Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one knows who he actually is. There's a couple suspects, but no one knows. One of the suspects was a Taurus, though. Mm. Not that that matters. <laughs> but, <laughs> Chris would know. To yeah, the girls. Yeah, yeah. The fresh on uh, Chris on his spiritual stuff. But yeah, man, you guys have been asking for it for a bit, man. So it's going to come out the Zodiac Killer on Fed It, man. So yeah, uh, last, yeah, last night I'm at the crib. I turn on YouTube. I'm like, oh, Myron's live. I'm like, hold on. Shaquella Robinson? <laughs> Mario, you dabbling in the dark? What the? What's going on here, bro? Brother, I got oh, so many know. requests for it, man. Yeah, Damn. she got killed by her friends, bro. Ridiculous. That's and wild. they just sat there and watched it. Wow. Yep. They beat her up and then they lied and they said that she had alcohol poisoning. But then when they did the autopsy, they found that her spinal cord was fucked. It like got beat up, destroyed, basically. Damn. Which is indicative of a, of a beatdown. And they, had, they found footage of her friend beating on her when she wasn't fighting back. Mm. Crazy. Wow. Crazy, yeah. Well, I, friends, I'll tell you man. this, though. Uh, um, the, the Mexican authorities are definitely pursuing it. Because normally, because I've worked with Mexican authorities, them niggas don't do nothing. You know but uh, they're working really hard to, uh, you know, because they already have an arrest warrant for the for the for one of the people that were involved. Damn. So that tells me that they, they're they they're actually working and they're taking this shit serious. They're, it's, they're charging her with, in Mexico, it's called femicide. Oh, wow. Instead of homicide. But, yeah, they're definitely going to go to jail. The FBI has a case open. But contrary to popular belief, guys... OK, the FBI is not leading the investigation. All they're doing is they opened up a case in the United States so that they can follow the case from a parallel perspective and be able to assist the Mexican authorities with extraditing that woman. Because there's a whole process that has to be done for it to happen. And I, all these bloggers and people that think they know what the hell they're talking about, a lot of them don't know what the fuck they're talking about. So if you guys want to see exactly how the extradition process works, how international criminals are brought to their countries where they're wanted, I break that down in fucking excruciating detail on Fed it, and I can speak about it because I'm the only person on YouTube that's actually done it legally. Legally, well, I mean, there's it's only as your job. <laughs> it yeah, was, it was your yeah, job. Yeah, because there's a bunch of people that are trying to talk about doing it and shit, but it's like, bro, you don't even know what you're talking about. This hearsay. They, they missed the most important experience. thing. They, none of them mentioned anything about an MLAT, mutual uh, lateral assistance treaty. You know what I mean? Like none of them mentioned anything. Uh, mutual legal assistance treaty. No, no one mentioned anything about an MLAT, and I was like, "What the? F how are y'all talking about this shit? Not mentioning MLATs?" I mean, anyway, anyway, that goes back to who's uh, gonna know that jargon? That jargon, bro. They're not. They're not. They're not. Yeah. But, but that's what I'm trying to say. People be out here talking like they know what the fuck they're talking about. They don't. Damn. So, oh, by, by the way, guys, party update. So, party is still on. Don't forget one more party. Um, everything's good to go. We had some issues earlier, but we're gonna do some new announcements coming up soon. But party's still on, my guys. So check it out. Coming right. up. Yeah, January fourteenth. Well, when it comes to law enforcement stuff, that's the one thing I'm very cocky about because I spent, I put my heart and soul into that career. So it's like it, it, when people say dumb shit, I'm just like, bro, this is wrong. I'm going to correct you. That's but like, anyway, that's like me and uh, Instagram, <laughs> literally. <laughs> all right, uh, all right, guys. Okay, so transitioning back to the show. Well, we'll these chats and then we'll get into today's topic. Ah, it's good to be back in Miami, and I already got a gig to work tonight. Hope y'all have a good show. And remember, Myron, a three hundred four is a perfect Frank Castle. Fair enough. Zulia by Big Mo deserves a Grammy. Okay, and that's for Michael Chelsea. And then he goes, advice for someone in the middle of being canceled. Don't get canceled. Don't, don't have you on another platform. Yeah. Rumble, my friend. My girl gave me two black eyes, but I love her. What should I do? Blue face. <laughs> Hold on. Yo. Black man. and blue? Blue face? 
eyes. Thanks, Chris. What? Uh, most shaped like the microwave sink. Stink. I'm confused. I don't get that one. From Hubble's Actual. I don't get either. Ambience for the soul. Did you hear about Chris Christensen, a guy from Orange County, uh, California, killed himself over a girl, x himself at Disneyland, SMH. Yes. Yeah. We've been getting a lot of uh, requests for about that. Chris Goat, thanks for the pick at Pizza Hut, Big Mo. One NT. When y'all took a picture at Big Mo uh, Pizza Hut? Oh. Uh, you okay. in Pizza Hut, Mo? No. Behind our back? <laughs> Cap. Mo. Gotcha, bitch. Mo's been capping, bro. Damn. Damn. Y'all fucking wish, bro. Y'all wish y'all <laughs> caught me, bro. I, I still eat spinach and kale so I can tell these bitches go to hell. Sheesh. Okay. All right. Looking okay. forward to this show. There's definitely some high earning men in the chat, but let's face it. The vast majority of men are stuck in that 40 to 60K range. That's and it's true. okay because you got to start somewhere, bro. Yeah. Like the point is like the mentality. Don't be pitch a pitch at person mentality wise. Uh, I don't play games says, all right, work on your roasting skills. Tired of hearing clown world. Switch it up, bro. I haven't said clown world in a while. Bro, you, you must be watching, like, all episodes. Yeah, I guess so. What the fuck? Uh, do you have an email? I can formally submit a request to do response to some of your videos. Mo. Hit up Mo. Yeah. Uh, Mo, what's your email? Or just uh, DM. Yeah, DM Mo. Yeah. DM, or, or if you don't have Instagram, just email me at B-I-G-M-O dot B-I-T-W at gmail.com. That is B-I-G-M-O dot B-I-T-W at gmail.com. Bam. And his Instagram is Big Mo underscore BTW. B I T W. B I T W. B I T W. Yeah, I don't know what that's. Best, best, best in the world. Best. <laughs> Our biggest in the world at <laughs> this point. Best the in the fuck? world, baby. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yo, why does Cleavage have so much power? Uh, what created this simp behavior, man? I catch myself slipping, man. Sometimes, yo, Cheyenne tried to speak to you in different voice tones to get her point across. To you as a manipulation tactic. Oh, he's talking about the clip from uh, from Stand Up TV. They Actually, put another one another out. Another one out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, bro, that's what girls do, man. They, a lot of girls know that they don't have a real personality, so they show their tits, bro. I mean, what 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 do I tell you? It is dropping soon. The episode's dropping soon. Yes. Uh, please never stop with the Fed eighteen eleven content. Literally, set time out of my Sunday and Thursday to watch. Keep it up, Myron. You're a goat. Thank you, bro. I know a lot of you guys enjoy that stuff. That Zodiac Killer one is going to be big. Yeah, I know you guys have been asking for that one. Uh, Chris be coming to the studio with the Henny shooters sticking out his pockets. Okay, what? let's refresh his dog. TYS thirty bucks Australia. Australian shout to you. What's good, brothers? Trying to get uh best. Trying my best to stop living paycheck to paycheck by building an app that helps find events in your area. Love from six, and that's from uh so bored. W Meyer for beating up terrorists. Okay, uh, hey. can you go over many of the lady tactics to watch out from for uh, most dangerous to lessen maybe or origins to this magnified hypersexual marketplace. Uh, bro, you must be new here. Yeah, we we, have we did already. A whole bunch of podcasts on female um, terms, manipulation tactics, etc. We have whole episodes on that. Monarchist, you you've been here for a minute, bro. You should know better. Yeah, you should know better. When's this? Come on. Uh, moved in with my girl, play, paying high rent. Is the cold truth? Is should I just leave her after seven years together and make sure I get my paper right, bro? Why that, do you live with your girl, bro? Is that even a question? You people should be right regardless, like being single or not. I don't know why y'all even y'all y'all still live with girls. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's a hell, bro. <laughs> YouTube is blocking a word that sounds like tumble. Are they? Okay. Rumble! Adolf was a Taurus, and so am I. Yay, 24. Oh, God. Yo, come on, bro. And that's coming from Michael Trillstein, the Jew. And cancel. Myron, your boss spot looking extra succulent. My boy, slide those headphones down so I can see it better. Yo, ow! Okay. Yo! Ha! Gay! I mean, unless you can see under his... Um, Scout with my hair is growing back though. I will say that it is growing back. I'm shocked. Honestly, <laughs> thank you, Evan F. Fam. Started watching Nov 2021. Since uh, then, I fixed my marriage. Finally made the jump into special operations in the army. Good stuff, man. Nice. And in the best shape of my life. Keep fighting uh, in the shade. No more podcasts in the world. Yes, absolutely. Sheesh. We are fighting in the shade because them arrows are fucking coming, man. For 300. 300 people. But you know what? It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, Spartans. Tonight we die in hell. <laughs> Even oh, I don't dabble in the dark. Sheesh. I don't, do you, I don't want to go to hell, but yeah. Do you, do you know what movie that's from? 300, yeah. Oh, okay. Have you Nick, ever seen it? Yes, I've seen it. Okay, Leonidas, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, Even I don't dabble in the dark. Sheesh. Fresh Prince Popo. Okay. WFN, I've been watching y'all for a bit over a year. Watching y'all help change my life. Appreciate y'all. Much love from Australia. Shout out to you. Nigel goes, 
Uh, since I'm a single father, does that make me less valued? By the way, I really look up to you guys. No, it does not, my friend. Yeah, it's it not, having a child as a man doesn't do the same as it does for a woman. Typically, something that lowers a woman's value increases a man's value. For example, dude that has sex with a lot of girls increases value. Girl that has sex with a lot of dudes loses her value. A dude that has a child typically gains value. A woman that has a child loses value. But I will say the more, more money that you have, the more of a chance is that, like, for example, they won't diss you off for having a kid. Because some girls yeah, are kind of yeah, like, iffy about it. So yeah. the more money you have, the better. It's amazing how intelligent girls are when it comes to, you know, what marrying a guy that has a single fucking, that's a single dad. Yeah. They're not going to take the same stupid risk that your dumb ass will marrying a single mom that's a bum. She'll only fuck with you if you're a single dad, if you got your money on right. Like right, athlete, to some point. Yeah. celebrity. Okay, yeah. he could take care of himself, so he's good. Yeah. And, and, he, and, and it makes you attractive, yeah. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Fresh and Fit. Money Mondays are the best and important shows to watch. Y'all should have the handyman uh, business on the pod for all people in the blue pill collar niche. Another crypto millionaire, billionaire died recently. Do you think this is going to affect crypto in any sense? And that's from Olga Maru. Maru. And then the other one's from Eduardo Press. Here's the thing, man. Uh, people can't weather the storm a lot of the times. And this is why we tell y'all, man, don't throw all your money in crypto. You know, you 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 only invest yeah. what you're willing to lose. We've talked about this with Charlie a million times, and you guys keep fucking putting in all your money in crypto, bro. Like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? But I will say, conspiracy wise, they have been dying so close to each other is weird, and all billionaires in crypto. And I'm like, is Elon Musk next? Like, bro, what's going on here? We're like, God Allegedly, damn. he sold off all his Bitcoin, which is probably cat. He is not next. <laughs> yeah. A uh, year calls. Celis goes. Just had an RP talk with my female cousins hitting the wall and complaining about men. Somehow the only ones that agreed with my points were the older married women in my family. That's from your cells. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Women don't mature about the sexual marketplace until they typically stop getting attention from the opposite gender. What the fuck do I mean by that? That means that when a girl gets old enough where she's no longer able to command the same level of attention and resources from men, that's when they start to fucking finally feel like Link in the goddamn dungeon. And they realize, holy shit. I, my value is actually perishable, but by then it's too fucking late. Young girls that are in their peak, 20, 21, 22, they don't give a fuck, bro. Y'all think I'd be talking these bimbos for them? No, it's for y'all to understand that they don't give a shit what we think. They really don't. When a girl's at her peak, everyone is invisible, and all they care about is their own life and what the fuck is going on. It's not so girls stop getting attention that they actually mature. And also, guys, please stop trying to debate with your family about these topics because you're just putting a strain on yourself because, bro, they're going to be like, Yo, this nigga weird, or this nigga's like on some other shit. And then it's yeah, like, bro, you, bro, we're debating, show you guys the actual facts on screen. Your family wise, you one on one, bro, that's not debatable, bro. That's your family, bro. Yeah. Well, in his case, they agreed with him. But some, it was the older some, women. Yeah. Some. It was the older women that agreed. Some. Which, yeah, the, the women that are older typically are more open to RP thoughts because they actually experience it and realize, damn, I'm not able to do the same shit I was able to do at 21 when I'm 31. Yeah, but you should discuss it with your brothers. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Not your like, yeah, female yeah. family women, members. bro. Like, yeah, bro. They, they don't care, not, bro. Yeah, they, they don't give a fuck, bro. At they all, they don't. They really fucking don't. It is what it is, bro. These these girls are delusional. Um. All right, right. so let's go ahead and hit the topic. We got four thousand plus y'all in here. So like the video, man. Like the goddamn video. All right, we're gonna talk about money today because it's Money Monday. Uh, go ahead first, take it away, guys. This topic is dear and near in my heart because this is my plague, my uh mindset for a while, um, back working a job, and it was kind of like okay. I'm here in America. I want to be successful. How do I move forward to become better and get out of this matrix, so to speak, nine to five uh, cycle? And I want to say this off rip as a as a, a preset that it's not about having no job. It's about the, men the, the mentality, the mindset of saying, you know what? Okay, how do I become independent in my own right? So if I do work a job, I'm not a slave to, to, to debt, to my employer. I can leave at any time and say, you know what? I'm tired of this job. I'm out. However, if you look paycheck to paycheck, you're stuck there because either you have debt, you're you're a slave to your to your uh, employer, or for whatever reason you need the money so badly that you can't ever step away to do what you really want to do. So the, the mindset is, guys, yes, paycheck to paycheck means you're going to work paycheck to paycheck. But the mentality is, okay, cool. I'm independent enough to know I have my own money, I have savings, I have a backup. I can walk away at any point in time with my, my dignity and my pride. So. Number one, guys, we got five things to cover to, uh, today regarding this stuff about paycheck to paycheck. And we'll start from number one, which is going to be uh, one sec here. So number one, round, round one, fight. It's going to be set clear goals so it's possible. So guys, you're working a job. You're wondering why am I not progressing in life? Why am I not moving forward? And it's not simple to set goals. However, let's be clear here. Goals lead to a destination. Like Mike says all the time on the show, you might want to go to a destination, right? But what about GPS? How are you going to actually get there? 
So for example, in your own life, if you don't know how to set goals for yourself to move forward out of your current situation, what's going to happen? By chance, by, by, the, by the luck of it? No. You got to work towards it. So this means, guys, off rip. You need to have clear goals, short-term and long-term goals for your, for your life. So off rip, what, what I want you to do is get like a, uh, maybe like a driver's board, like a piece of paper, or even a notepad, right? Make two columns, long-term and short-term. You put, for example, maybe make extra money a month, like $1,000 a month extra uh, from your cur current uh, salary. Or for example, okay, cool, what's your next job? Or for example, get a degree, a certificate, whatever you want to do move forward, but like set actionable goals you can actually achieve short-term. The long term is going to be, for example, okay, buy property, um, maybe save enough, enough money for, um, you know, retirement, stuff like that. But you need goals no matter what. So what I did back in the day, on my first job, I had actual um, text on my driver's board. Every morning I wake up, I'll see the text, and I had pictures to motivate me to move forward. So Chris, I have a, a screenshot here you, you, you can put on the screen where I show off rip the cars I wanted, my family, my religion. And what I want to do to move forward. So this motivated me every single morning. So guys, here we have, this is six years ago in my room, in my crib, right? So at the Range Rover, achieved that. Audi R8, Lamborghini. My mom bought a new cell phone. I want to buy her a house and a new car, did that. And then me speaking on stage in front of thousands of people, that was one of my goals too as well. And then who is my uh, Lord and Savior? So <laughs> had my goals set up on my driver's board, but also as well pictures to show me, you know what? Cool. I can achieve this, but I, I need to wake up every morning, put it in my head to move forward. So I'll go to work like everybody else, but I had a mindset and I had a goal towards what, what I was doing. So I didn't go in there. It was like, okay, I'm at work today. I'm just going to work, go home and sleep. No, I'm at work, but I'm progressing towards my goals and I would save money. I wouldn't go out um, and also read books. I go to YouTube, learn about real estate, investing, how to move forward in life, uh, how to make money. And all in my head is whenever I woke up, my goals. I'll see, I'll see all my list of goals, short term, long term, then my, my, my pictures in my room. And then, for example, all of that motivated me to move forward every single day. And it, it must sound corny. Oh, pictures in your room fresh or like having it written down. Guys, when you write it down, I don't know what it is. It comes true. And then your mind works towards that every single day. So, guys, off rip. You need clear set goals. I don't care who you are, what you're about. Dude, even billionaires, billionaires, they have goals for themselves. So you, if you don't have any of that, bro, you're lacking off rip right now. So that's number one. Set goals as soon as possible and don't delay. Do after the stream, get a pen and paper, get a driver's board, set it up. Two columns, short term, long term. I'm telling you right now, guys, it's going to change how you move, your mindset, all of that. So. Yeah, the other thing I also want to add to that, guys, is um, not only do you need to set a goal, you need to set a deadline. Because I always say a goal without a deadline mm. is just a dream, okay? So I'll give you guys an example in my situation, right? So when I was working for the uh, for the government, right, <clears throat> as you guys know, I left the government actually a year ago, uh, two years ago today, I, I left the government. I think it was December 4th or December 5th. Mm -hmm. Exactly two years ago, guys, uh, my goal was, okay. I'm going on. I'm going to do this entrepreneur thing. I need to find a way to replace my government income and do it passively so that I never have to worry about money again. So at the time, I was making about 120, 130 grand per year working for Uncle Sam. Sheesh. However, as y'all know, they kill you with taxes. And I was single, too. So they would destroy me on taxes. I was only taking home about $7,000 a month after tax, everything else like that. They were destroying me, right? Which is actually funny because I pay less taxes now as, as a fucking multimillionaire than being a W. Than <laughs> You know what I mean? And of course, legally, right? Because I have a bunch of write-offs of being an entrepreneur and I own real estate, which is probably one of the best ways, um, you know, to combat high taxes that you can ever think of. But, uh, you know, and I, I've explained this on other episodes, lowering your tax liability through real estate, but that's a whole other episode. But my point of, is this, I was making about 7,000 after taxes with the government, right? So as soon as I left the government, I said, damn, I need to find a way to replace this goddamn income that's passive. So I never have to worry about money again. Okay. So what I did was, I was like, I'm going to start buying real estate, okay? Because I knew with real estate, not only am I going to be able to shelter my money from, you know, have high tax liability, but also I'll be able to get a recurring um, income that's pretty damn consistent, okay? Because people always need a place to live. People are always going to typically pay their rent somewhere between the first and the fifth, and it's going to be consistent to a degree. So I said, all right, step one, I need to replace my government income. I need to get that 7K. So last year, you guys know, I went crazy. I bought seven houses in one year last year. I took all my earned income, right? from YouTube, my fitness business, 
um, from the money I had saved in my uh, my retirement account with the government, my thrift savings plan for some of you government employees out there, TSP, you guys know what I'm talking about. I took all that money out and I just started dumping it into real estate. OK, I, I bought a couple. I bought two houses cash last year. I bought a bunch of finance. And I was just relentless about it. And the reason why I was, I was like, yo, I need to get this shit done. And my goal was to get to that number, that 7K per, uh, that 7K in, uh, in, uh, in 2021, I was able to beat that and hit 10K. And like my main goal was seven. And then I was like, all right, if I could do 10, I'm going to do 10. So I was able to go ahead and get it up to 10K. So at this point I make six figures a year passively. I could fucking be in my underwear all day. I'll be fine. Right. And the other reason too, guys, is that. I was like, all right, all right, entrepreneurship is is very scary, right? Coming from a government employee, it was very scary for me at the time. And then on top of that, let's be honest here, guys. The content we make is extremely <laughs> edgy. Uh edgy and volatile, <laughs> right? We can get platformed any day. You know what I mean? We got people gunning for us. There's people that literally want to see us fail and get destroyed, bro. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I want to be able to make this money, have it come in consistently. You also want to know why? You guys want to know why I'm able to be so raw and not give a fuck and tell these bitches get the fuck out of my spot? Because, yo, I, I, I'm I, good financially. So it allows me to actually be a better content creator because I don't have to be stepping on eggshells and being all scared. Oh, my God. Uh. Of course, you got to do that within reason, but I'm not a pussy about it, okay? it's t I'm able to take calculated risks. You know, that's, why, that's a big reason why I went, uh, went over to Rumble, right? But it allowed me that freedom to... Uh, operate in a better sense as a content creator. Because I'll be honest with y'all, a lot of these fucking YouTubers, I've met them. They are not who they are on fucking camera, bro. A lot of these guys that act, that act all nice and polite and they're all friendly and shit like that, bro. You meet them in person, they're fucking dickheads. And they're not as uh, politically correct as y'all think they are. All right? At and least with us, we're, we keep it real. And also, they're not financially savvy at all. Yeah. They literally got money, but they're really broke. Oh, yeah. They'd they be cap, bro. They're yeah. 100% cap. Yeah. So, um, so now, guys, right? My goal is to hit uh, 20k a month passively. That's that's what I've been working on this year. I'm going to come close to it, right? Because the real estate market kind of, with the interest rates spiking up and everything else like that, there weren't that many deals. But um, I, I got two deals right now that I'm in the middle of uh, that I'm under contract for that should burn me extremely close, if not to that mark. But you have to be relentless about it, guys. You have to have the goal, have a deadline for set goal, and do everything that's required mm -hmm. to achieve that goal. Fuck your feelings, fuck your friends, even fuck your family, your girlfriend, all that shit. A big part of my success, guys, is that I never had like a super serious girlfriend that could influence what the fuck I wanted to do. A lot of y'all will sit there and change your life around over some bitch. And it's like, yo, what the fuck is going on? And this is why it's so important to not have distractions and not care what other people think, man. So your goals have to be number one guys you must be relentless about it like you will not take no for an answer you are going to find a way to get it done you know most people look oh my god they find a way for to make an excuse you need to find a way to get it done regardless of excuse damn w once again guys what am i have a goal in mind and that goal led to him creating income for himself passively so all right guys you need a goal no matter what um i have one more photo here as well and i applied it to money but guys you can use this for anything, anything. you can use it you can use it for maybe uh athletics a, a body in the gym maybe you're going to sign up for a fitness competition maybe uh you know athletics whatever you but the point is is that it's the same rubric it's the same formula goal deadline I must now do anything required to achieve this goal within this deadline. And that, yeah. that's right there is the recipe for success. And then you do that consistently over a period of time. What do I tell you? Consistency plus time equals success. And that is why so many people fail. Oh, let me be spontaneous and not be adhere to my schedule and make this shit happen. But guess what happens? You end up being a fucking loser doing that shit and you don't get, achieve your goals. Big facts. And then people also wonder, how do you stay motivated to get your goals done through all the distraction, right? And this is just a quick reminder here. So. Back when I was at my old job, and this is my second car. I had a Toyota Corolla before this with the same license plate. Um, I'll drive to work every single day but with a goal in mind and with a passion and mo motivated, right? People will laugh and be like, oh, see your life with a Toyota and, and Hyundai? Huh, bro, you're a bum, bro. You're never going to make it. And it was like, they can laugh all they want, but you know what? I knew where I was going. And my goals, every single day, I was working towards them. And that motivated me to stay on course. Guys, people are going to laugh at you, call you names. Family's going to make fun of you. Oh, what are you doing? You're not, you're not right. What da, da, da. Bro, they don't know any better, but you know better. You have goals for yourself. So my thing is, stay on track, guys. If, if you have goals, help you stay in place. And at the same time, with goals, you can end up at a destination. So it's very important, guys. And, and I just want to tell you all this, too, real fast, right? Um, Chris, hit me with the sound effect. Yep, got you. Misogyny.
The only people that can afford to be spontaneous and do stupid shit and not adhere to their goal are fucking women, bro. Mm. Sorry. Mm. Like, as a guy, I, I, yo, monotony is great. Do the same thing over and fucking over again until you become successful, guys, right? Because if you're working towards something, you got to understand a lot of success, guys, is doing the same thing over and over and over again and just work chipping away at it, right? Women, on the other hand, right? Let's be honest. Oh, I want to be spontaneous. I want to travel the world, do all this other dumb shit, blah, blah, blah. Like, their life affords their, – their, a female existence allows you to be spontaneous and do certain shit because they're not held to a burden of performance like you are, okay? If you go ahead and travel the world and do all this other shit and get distracted, well, nobody's going to come and fucking save you, Nobody. all right? But with a woman, they can go ahead and afford to be a thought for a month and then come back to work and nothing happens because some guy will sit there and sip and save them. You don't get that – privilege men must perform but we live in this crazy ass world where we tell men they're equal to women they can act like women they could go ahead and not perform be a bum be broke etc and then what happens you go ahead and you believe the lie that men and women are equal and we're egalitarian and we can split bills 50 50 and partnerships and all this other fuck shit it doesn't fucking work these hoes don't want a partner they want a superior and for you to be the superior you must actually be superior in every facet finances fitness Understanding game, being uh, confident, being competent. All these things fucking matter because girls will say dumb shit on this podcast and say, I want an equal partner, but they do not want that. They want you to be better than them in every single regard. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is by fucking working on yourself and demonstrating it every single day. Bitch, I'm better than you. This is what we're going to do. Okay. That's what women want. People say, oh my God, you guys are so misogynistic. Hey, man, women love massages, all right? <laughs> it is what it is because guys that are good with women understand inherently that they must be in a leadership role. How do you get the leadership role? By getting your fucking Pokemon badges up. How do you get your Pokemon badges up? By waking up every day, looking at your goals, saying, damn, I got a deadline, making this shit fucking happen, beating this gym leader, beating that gym leader, AKA getting this job, making this money, grinding through, going to the gym, all these fucking Pokemon badges you gotta accumulate so that when you do find a girl that you actually like, AKA Mewtwo, you got the fucking master ball to catch her dumbass because you've already went through and done the fucking work. But a lot of you fucking guys can't even beat fucking Brock at Peter Gym and you wonder why who why do any girls respect me why do any girls respect me no, 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 no. you can't level up and you wonder why no one takes you seriously you must become if you want to come that's how it goes man literally what the fuck is Perfect. wrong with y'all motherfuckers bro y'all be broke as fuck fat as fuck loser as fuck thinking that you're gonna get a bad bitch that's not how the world works man that's not how the world works. Do not listen to these dumb bitches that come on the show and say, I want an equal partner. It's a fucking lie. Because the next question I say, okay, you used to split bills with your guy. Where's that nigga now? Gone. Gone, Gone like the Gone. wind. Nowhere to be seen. <laughs> that bitch hit him with an instant transmission onto another dick, man. Yep. All right? This is why the book is coming out. Why <laughs> women deserve less. I'm going to be talking about this shit explicitly. Oh, shit. How women will say bullshit about I want equality, but they don't want it whatsoever. At all. You must be superior in every single regard. Sorry, guys. It's 2020 fucking two, man. It's about to be 2023. These bitches are getting hit up by celebrities that make 10x what you fucking make. That have more status than you fucking have. The only way you can combat the fuckery of today's sexual marketplace is you got to have everything on point. You might not make as much money as the other guy, right? You might not compete with a billionaire in her DMs or a multi-multi-millionaire in her DMs, but you could definitely have frame. You could definitely get in shape. You could definitely be charming. You could definitely take care of yourself and become more attractive, right? When you have all these things in line, very few men can actually compete with you because most guys are victims of their own success. So what I mean by that is they might have money, right? But they got no game. Or they might be a shape, but they're fucking bums. That's why I tell you guys so... I, you must be fucking well-rounded, okay? You can't have a fucking Pokemon team of all electric Pokemon. Guess what happens? You go to a fucking Leaf Gym, you get fucked up. Yep. You need to have a psychic Pokemon. You need to have a fucking water Pokemon. You need to have a fire Pokemon, a grass Pokemon, you know, a flying Pokemon, whatever the fuck it is. You got to have a diversified team. Same shit. You must be a diversified man and be excellent in a bunch of different components so that you can be universally attractive to the most bitches. In other words, you can beat the most fucking gym leaders. A lot of you motherfuckers run around with a team of only fucking uh, well, normal Pokemon. <laughs> normal Pokemon. The worst kind. Motherfuckers got a full team of chances. Wonder why you taking L's. Oh man, you didn't plan. For, you didn't make, make any plans, bro. Yeah, at all. You niggas got a bunch of chances taking a chance on life, trying to figure it out. <laughs> it ain't gonna fucking work. Stop taking a chance on life. Own your life and make it fucking happen. That's why I don't accept bullshit. Oh, it, it wasn't meant to be. Oh, the signs didn't light up. Or no, the, it just wasn't there. Blah blah blah. I don't believe that shit. 
I don't believe none of this. Shit. It wasn't meant to be that. Fuck that. I'm going to make it be. That's female thinking. Yep. Oh, it, it wasn't meant to be or it wasn't in the stars. It just wasn't in the cards. Oh, my God. Fuck that shit. <laughs> we are not women. We don't sit here and say dumb shit like that. You'll make it fucking happen regardless of the circumstances. You cannot play by the same rule book as bitches. You will become a bitch if you play by the same rule book as bitches. You must play the rule book as a fucking man by any means necessary. Stop being fucking losers, man. Sheesh. Are you ready? Uh, and, uh, go and fresh, uh, you were saying that um, you know you have photos up uh, for your motivation. I got something for you since you've been going to the gym. Uh, here's a photo that you can use as motivation. Oh, you're funny, bro. You're funny. <laughs> this nigga, bro. This there nigga, we go, man. Fresh, man. Put the sun fresh. This nigga, Guess man. Guess what? Get in the yeah. gym, man. This nigga, bro. Put some water in the chat. We got so, some water. up. Mr. Pump Popo. So, so. Popo Pump. <laughs> <laughs> Not funny. Um. So, the quad said, hey, I can still win with, win with a team of chances. <laughs> bro, you wildin', bro. No way possible. Oh, man. Um, but you, you made a good point. Yeah. about girls being able to actually live life and control their destiny by the wind, just letting it blow by. Mm-hmm. And as a guy, you can't. You got to take it into your own hands. But imagine all the girls that go traveling around the world. They go to Dubai, Cancun, France, Spain, the Caribbean islands. And then they're 30 years old, or 27 years old, and they're like, you know what? I'm tired of taking tickets around the world. I want a man. And some, some of you imps in here marry them and it saved them. You fucking simps. But guess what? Ugh. If that was you. All right, Twitch, we out. Yeah, oh, yeah, Twitch. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah. I, I purposely didn't say on yeah, purpose. Yeah, yeah, I, cool. I bullied the words. Bro, bro. Yeah, bro. Myron, this bro, nigga, man. man. Yeah, we off Twitch. Anyhow. Oh, Anyhow, we're, we're rumble. Fuck it. The, the point is that, like, imagine those girls that travel the world, take they around the world, get saved. If you do the same shit, bro, you're not being saved by nobody. If you're broke, nobody cares. So, offer it, guys, that Myron said earlier. Take it into your own hands, set goals, and come up with a W. All right, number two. Oh, ready? I got you right now. Round two. Fight. Okay. And all these work, all these uh, goals uh, work in tandem. Number two is become debt free. So offer it, right, guys? If you're working a job nine to five, paycheck to paycheck, I get it. You're struggling. Something might happen. Maybe an event with your car. You had to use your credit card. You had to go into debt for a payment. I get it. However. However, if you become debt free in your job, you have freedom. So let me explain. You work a job, right? You go to your employer. He offers you a salary for your line of work for the value you add to that, that company. It could be ten dollars an hour, fifteen dollars an hour, but they pay you for your time to work a specific task. Now, when it comes to being debt free, if you're debt free, you have freedom to choose to work or not to work. But if you're in debt, you're a slave because now. If you don't work, you can't pay your bills. You can't pay your, your debts off. You're pretty much a slave at that point. But if you're debt free, you have the freedom to walk away at any point and say, you know what? I'm tired of this crap. I don't feel like I'm being treated well here. I'm going to walk away with a, diff- a different job or business. So I said this to say, guys, like, pitch to the pitch, that means you're a slave to that person because you have to be because you're in debt and you're a slave. But if you are free with the, being debt free, you have money saved up, then guess what? You can decide, you know what? Today, I'm done. I'm tired of bull crap. I'm walking away. But without freedom to do that, you are stuck. So the mentality is, guys, okay, I'm working a job, but I can work overtime or work two jobs, pay off my debt. So I'm out of that debt. And I got freedom of choice. So you know what? Now today, after working five, 10 years in this company, I've had my time here. I got experience. I can move on to a different company and walk away. But if you don't have that, that free um, setup or mindset, you can't walk away. Now, Number um, three is going to be next one as well for business. But I'm saying this to say, if you have, if you're debt free, go walk away with your own business as well. But any fear, any type of like, um, you know, uh, issues or regret. But being debt free gives you freedom, and that's what's very important uh, in life. Uh, also, I want to clarify, guys, that there's two different types of debt, right? You got good debt and bad debt. All right, the debt that Fresh is talking about is consumer debt, mm-hmm. credit cards, car payments that don't necessarily benefit you from a tax perspective, paying for um, stupid shit that you shouldn't necessarily be buying clothes, all this stuff. That is what you want. Maybe useless subscription service. Speaking of which, it's taking on debt that's going to lose you money. And most people, especially guys that live paycheck to paycheck, go ahead and uh, and accrue debt that loses them money. It doesn't pay them back any type of money, and it costs them money to hold. All right? Like, for example, a boat, 
Nine out of 10 times is going to be a liability unless you're able to somehow utilize it to, you know, rent it out, make some money. Then it could be an, an asset. But you got to be intelligent about, OK, if I buy this thing, is it going to make me money? And if it doesn't make you money, nine out of 10 times, you probably don't need it, man. OK, guys, so you just need to be intelligent. and understand that there's two different types of debt. And if you're, uh, you know, living in debt with consumer debt, that's not where you want to go, especially when it's credit card debt, because credit card debt, guys, is going to fuck you up. <clears throat> Credit card debt is going to fuck you up because it's going to lower your credit score. The interest rates are extremely high. And quite frankly, most people buy stupid shit with credit cards that they don't need to impress people that they don't care about and they go broke in the process. It's not worth it. Big facts. All right, guys. And then let's do some chats real quick. If you don't mind. All right. I don't play games. My BM will let you write, but bus, but what should I do? Baby, baby mother? Yep. What do you mean? What, what, what should you do? What, what does he mean by that? Okay, never worried. Australian twenty bucks. Shout out to you, Don Under. Mm -hmm. Eddie, I'm nineteen, making seventy five k a year, working on my nine to five, but my side business, working to get hundred k. Do you recommend going to the sugar site or just run an Instagram game? Do both. Why not? Bobby, I just got a new job, making one fifteen k a year. I don't have any cash. I'm twenty k in debt. After bills, that two thousand five hundred dollars a month extra. What should I do with that, with that money? Um, he's his job one fifteen k a year. And he has um. 20k in debt, bro. Pay, pay your debt off, bro. I mean, like, my thing, guys. Like, look, if you're in debt, right? If you don't know how to pay it off, get a second job at least, because yeah, the faster you pay off, the better. And then secondly, like, bro, you need money. And if you're in debt, bro, it's a bad sign. When bro. I was working for the government, I, I got a, you know, I started my fitness business. I took that money from the fitness business and paid my college debt off. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it didn't offset like my money that I regularly made. And guys, there's a mental strain that you don't see when you go to work because you're like, damn, I have bills to pay and I'm in debt. When you're debt free, you move different, you talk different, yep. you walk different. Yep. People talk to you like, bro, who are you talking to? Yeah. Nigga, I'm free. I can walk away right now. Yeah. Boss says to you, yo, slack up. Da -da. Nigga, who are you talking to? Yeah. I can walk away today. Yeah. So it's like the mentality is different, guys. It's so important. It's a mental strain. Don't forget you that. You never want to be in a position where you need it. You always want to be in a position where you want to do it. Exactly. You know? And and being in debt, bro, it, it, it's it's kind of like an unspoken thing, the pain in the ass that you kind of have to deal with, like, damn, I'm in credit card debt or whatever. So it depends on what kind of debt you have. Like, for example, this is why I like real estate so much. My real estate pays for itself. so And it pays me extra on top of that. So I could take on as much debt as I want in real estate. I don't give a shit because it pays for itself, pays me cash flow because I buy properties the only cash flow. If it doesn't cash flow, you say, just say no. This is being an intelligent investor. And um, it doesn't matter how much debt you have. Robert Kiyosaki has damn near a billion dollars in debt, but he's rich <laughs> as fuck. How, how is that? Well, because he uses other people's money, money to procure an asset. He controls the asset, only putting 20% of his own money down. 80% is given to him by the bank, and then that property pays him a monthly pay a payment. He's able to cash flow on that. And then on top of that, <clears throat> and then on top of that, it pays for itself. So it's a W. You can take on as much debt as you want when it comes to real estate, right? Assuming your property cash flows and you know what you're doing, right? But this is the importance of getting the difference between good debt and bad debt, all right? Consumer debt, guys, stay away from it. That's why me and Fresh are so big on like, yo, don't have a bunch of stupid shit that you don't necessarily need, all right? Like me, especially, I'm like real big on minimalism, not having a lot of clothes, not having a lot of the stuff. Fresh is getting there. He's getting rid of a lot of his stuff. Yeah. But uh... he's way better than me at that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm like getting to that myself, but he's way better than me at that 100%. Yeah. I mean, guys, I, I wear the same shit every day. All right. Get into solar sales. The money is crazy. Commissions are easily five to seven K. Thank you all so much for inspiring me to get off my ass. Cool. Nice, brother. Yeah. I've been on the show for a while, but these tactics keep evolving. Like, man, I know. No, I know. Okay, I'm Gra trying to read. Grammar, you, 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 yeah, your grammar's, grammar's bad. Up, yeah. bro. But I think he used to say, "I know creative these these ladies cheat." I was at the bar, and this girl was using her best friend as a middleman to cheat. Absolutely, bro, <laughs> happens all the time. Uh, I'm 90k in debt. I used to make 30k a month. I recently got a promo, and now I make 60k. Should I take all the extra income to clear the debt as soon as possible, or focusing on saving uh, at the same time? Uh, yeah, bro. If it's consumer, it depends on what kind of debt it is. But if it's consumer debt, bro, get rid of that fucking shit. And the other reason, too, why you want to get get rid of consumer debt is that let's say you do want to buy real estate or you do want to buy assets. You want to utilize loan. If your credit score sucks, they're not going to give you a loan or they're going to give you a shitty ass interest rate. Ten percent interest rate. That's fucking terrible. That will eat away at any cash flow you might have made. So that's another reason as well why you want a good credit score. A good credit score will make you a will put you in a position where banks compete for your business to get a loan and you could go ahead and sh uh, shop rate to get the best interest rate. But if your credit score sucks. Well, guess what? They're going to be like, oh, uh, the best we can do for you is uh, 10%. Hmm. And the next thing you know, you over here fucking paying out the wooza for a house 
four, three, four interest points above what it should be because your credit score fucking sucks. So to give you an example, Chris, if you don't mind bringing something on the screen. Yep. So my buddy, right, had a terrible credit score. It was almost like damn near 500, mm -hmm. right, or, or less. And he wanted to get a Toyota Corolla as a kind of like to get his credit back up running to have that history. His payment on that Toyota was 450 bucks. Mm. It's a 1992. What the fuck? Remember, what? his rate, his his score is terrible. Yeah. So you gotta take whatever he, he can get. Yep. So back then I had a a, a Camaro, right? Uh, twenty nineteen Camaro. Um, I was paying for that car two fifty, because mm. I had a great credit score. Mm. So guys, off rip, you can have a nice ass car, you have a shitty car. If you don't have a good uh, credit score, they can make you pay for it, hundred percent. So no, I'm, not I'm gonna, only that. Now, let me give you guys another, some more game as well. Hold on, Chris. I'm not done, but, but um, like a lot of these crypto guys that you guys see that are like you know, offing themselves right now. Mm -hmm. Y'all want to know a dirty secret about a lot of these big crypto guys? They have no credit or shitty credit, which is why they have to invest all their money into fucking crypto versus like being involved in real estate. Good point. Okay, I'm just gonna keep it all the way one thousand with y'all. A lot of these crypto guys have shitty fucking credit. Maybe they bad, got into bad consumer debt. They got lucky with a coin. They decide, fuck it, I'm not going to go and pay my debts off. I got a million dollars in crypto. I'm good. These guys will never find me, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? Now you're in a volatile ass, uh, asset class. You might lose your money. And on top of that, you don't have an asset that's going to consistently pay you. Yeah. Now, does real estate give you the same returns that a crypto, that a you know a, a bullish coin will? No. Maybe not. But it's consistent and it helps you with your taxes. It's stable. And it's stable. And you can do a cash out refinance and borrow against it and get that money back tax fucking free. There's a reason why 95% plus of millionaires have real estate and made their first million on fucking real estate. I'm not here to say that crypto is a terrible asset class, but a lot of the guys that I know, There's especially also. these young boys that made their money off crypto, they have shitty fucking credit scores. So they were not able to go ahead and use the bank to buy a home and use proper leverage to be able to get accrue the debt in a healthy way. And be able to have it pay for itself, etc. So when you don't have a good credit score, you become a prisoner of certain types of asset classes and or a prisoner of whatever you try to buy. Because look, 1992, uh, uh, you said um, Nissan? Toyota. Toyota. Yeah. Paying to 400, 400 dude, I, can, I was like, are you serious, bro? I was like, yeah, bro. His score is terrible. Bro, if, your credit, if you don't pay, the banks will make you pay. Facts. I promise you guys. If your credit score sucks and you don't pay your bills on time, the bank will get their money from you one way or another. And typically it's them finessing you with high interest rates. Yeah, imagine you're like, uh, Mr. Uh, banker, um, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Could you give me a break? What's your score? Nope. <laughs> sorry, son. You sorry out of luck. I don't give a fuck, bro. Bruh. Here's nope. your score. Here's your rate. That's it. Bro, I'm telling you right now, guys, like, they don't give a fuck about you as an individual. They care about your score. So if you know that going forward, you're going to smart how you move with your score and off rip, have it better for yourself. Now, here is the L part I took. So I missed a very good points in my life uh, when I was uh, coming up in America, but I also missed a very bad points as well. So the picture down below is a motorcycle I, I purchased through a personal loan. Guys, I make W's, but I also take L's as well. So this is one of my biggest L's I took coming to America, and it was using uh, a loan to get a vehicle, a personal loan. So I thought, you know what? I'm working a job. I'm doing pretty good. I could use other people's money, right, to go buy a depreciated asset and just pay it off eventually, you know, pretty soon. I'll pay it off in like maybe like five months, six months, and I'll be good with it, right? Guys, life doesn't always work in your favor. So back then, I had other bills coming up and I had a credit card as well. So I was managing, you know, my, my, my score pretty well, but, you know, I messed up here and there. I, some things came up and I kind of over leveraged myself a little bit. So what happened was I got the motorcycle through the personal loan, but I didn't really gauge as much as paying off. Uh, later on. So I, I actually passed the five months I wanted to pay it off in, and the interest rate was pretty high. So it was like 20%, something like that. It was really high. So what happened was it started getting interest over time, and then it started to build up. So I was paying on my car and the motorcycle with the loan, and that was a terrible idea. However, of course, I wisened up. I paid it off eventually. I was good to go. But I made a mistake because I wanted to have that fun toy right now by the way to pay off in cash, and it caused me problems in the, in the future. So guys, if you want something, I get it. You want it right now. My microwave mentality. Guys, don't be like me. Don't take a personal loan. Just wait. Get the cash or um, get the money itself and then get it. Don't be like me. Get a loan and then, okay, I got a motorcycle. I got a car. Yeah, bro, you're in debt. Be smart about it. Move smart. That was my L. Learn from it and Stupid. move forward.
So that's my L right there, guys, sharing with you. Good and bad. Hey, man, I made some mistakes, too. It's what it is. But hopefully, hopefully you can learn from it and move forward as well. Bam. Yeah. All right. Uh, so now we're on to uh, number four, right? Yeah. No, uh, number number uh, three. Number three is going to be oh. round three. Okay. Create a side business slash hustle. Yeah. So off rip, you know, yeah, you're working a job. We get that part. But for the most part, guys, if you have a mentality of, you know what? I want to do better. I want to become better. You're going to create your own business sooner or later. And the fastest way to make money for yourself is to have your own business or own hustle. So this could be as simple as selling these things on eBay, on OfferUp, on Craigslist that you don't need in your house. That's making money on the side. Or maybe a lawn business, maybe e-commerce, maybe even YouTube or Twitch. The point is that like a side business can give you income. And eventually, if you're smart about it and you move correctly, find out your freedom to move forward out of your job. So guys, what I did was I said, you know what? What can I do to make money outside of my business? And at the same time, um, have a goal to maybe leave in the future. And one idea I had was doing e-commerce. I did that first. I, did, I doubled in a little bit. It did, did it work out? No. But I tried it. I, I, I worked on it. And I guess I get some experience. Then I did digital marketing. Um, that did, did pretty well as well for, for me at the very beginning. But personally, I didn't like it too much. I kind of got into it and I fell off of it. So I tried that as well. But what I was doing, I was trying different things to see what was good for me. And uh, Guys, most of you are like, oh, bro, I'm going to get into this and that. And like, I'm like, bro. First, get experience, and then decide if you want to do it long term because it looks good on outside. But when we, we, we actually get into it, it's kind of like, oh damn, like this is actually like not what I want to do. So I would go on YouTube, type in how to make money online. I tried e-commerce, digital marketing. I tried um stocks, all that stuff. And overall, I found that YouTube was a good fit for me in terms of like making prank videos, making content like that. And that took me a little bit further than I thought. Uh, but once again, me trying these things and feeling taught me cool. This is dope and all, but it's not for me. So off rip, guys. You may not know what you, what you want to do as a side business or side hustle, but try different things off rip. And look, you may not know what it is, but YouTube it, Google it, how to make money online, how to make money in 2022. And you, you, you might be surprised. It might be something that you, you, you never thought possible. You try it. Wow, this is fun. I actually enjoy doing this. You make money as well. Uh, try, give it a try. My thing is like, try multiple things so you can get like a, a perspective for yourself and then say, you know what? This works for me. I'm, I'm going to go down this path. That's what I did. Yeah. Um, same here, guys. I mean, uh, when I <clears throat> was working for the government, I started my fitness business, Unplug Fitness, and I made some a good amount of side money from that, right? The, I was able to scale it up to six figures. And with that money, the main thing I did was I paid off my college debt and I pretty much erased any type of credit card debt that I was in. So yeah. it allowed me to kind of still live um, my life at the same level while simultaneously being able to pay off annoying as debts that would have probably put me in a certain situation where I wouldn't have been able to enjoy my life to the same degree. Good point. Yeah. Right. So that is the importance, right? And the beauty of starting a side business is because it allows you, you can work as hard or as little as, as you want on it, scale it up, scale it down, whatever it may be to fit your needs at that time. And then like Fresh said, if you are able to um, really monetize it to a significant degree, you can start to walk away from your job. Normally we tell y'all, you don't want to walk away from your job until you're making at least 1.5 to two times as much money, yeah. or you have a considerable amount of money saved before you walk away from your job. Um, but, uh, but that's how you basically begin the process. And some of you guys, Let's be honest. Y'all have some debt. You're not making enough at your job. You're making only 50K per year and you got, you know, 20, 30K in debt. You're going to have to pick up another job and work more hours and pay that debt off, man, because consumer debt will come and destroy you. Yeah. Especially since these credit card companies, guys, they're incentivized to keep their interest rate high so that you only pay um, the interest rate, essentially, and you never actually buy, get the principal down. Right. They want you to make those minimum payments. The worst thing you could do for a credit card company is be like me and fresh, pay it a full every single month, get the free points, get the free dollars. Right. Whether it's a cash back card, a travel card, whatever, and then use their money to purchase assets that you can then go back and write off. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they don't want you to do. OK, so that's why we're so big on getting rid of consumer debt, guys. First, once you get rid of that consumer debt. Now you can breathe, you can start get a lay of the land, and then you can go ahead and start to purchase assets and collect debt the correct way through purchasing assets, okay? And some of you, I get it. You don't know what you want to do, right? So at the very beginning, I didn't know either. I was like, how do I make money on the side? And I didn't know what to do, guys. So what did I do? My job offered overtime. So I would work ten five to 10 hours after work, right, to make the extra money. And with, with the money I made, I paid off all my debt. That I was debt free at that point. Now I had the freedom to say, you know what? I got time to think, 
tend to work on stuff behind the scenes. What could I do? And then I started doing, doing YouTube. So guys, get a skill, do o- o- overtime if you can, get a second job, and then that starts the clock running. Like, okay, cool, cool. you know what? I'm making extra money, but what's the next step? And you might even find doing that process, you find a friend, a mentor, someone in that space that can help you move forward. So guys, find a skill, work overtime. The fact is like, don't sit there and be like, oh, well, life is tough. It sucks. I'm going to get paid $10 an hour. We get it, bro. But get a second job, get a different skill, or overtime. You have options, bro. You have options. That's all we're saying here. So, bam. All right. Now we're on number four. Round four. Number four. All right, guys. Number four is going to be actually a funny one. one. Very important one. Very important one. Cut out major distractions. So, guys, there's TV, (laughs) there's social media, there's your cell phone right here. There is literally. Everything against you to distract you. And sports, World Cup, it's yeah. happening right now. Yep. Guys, I know people that miss work. They left um, uh, a, sec- a second job. They did just to sit and watch, watch the show. I'm like, are you serious, bro? Are you serious? Like, that's a team that's making money right now. Are you making money? No, you're not. So I get it. We have our hobbies and our, you know, pastimes of having fun. But at the same time, guys, your life matters. So if you're not actively working towards finding out how to make it so yourself become better, be, be having fun entertainment-wise, like watching movies, like, you know, taking trips to, like, I don't know, expensive resort. Bro, you're still broke. You're still in debt. You're not really enjoying it. You, you know what's happening? You go on a vacation to someplace and you're in debt. What are you really doing? What are you really doing? You're, you're digging something in a deeper, deeper debt hole. That's what, that's what you're doing. So, so, so it's kind of like you're making yourself worse in that scenario. So my thing is, like, at least color distractions that that includes uh spending time after watching tv guys if you spend five hours watching tv after work that's time you could be spending on your business or better yourself and off rip if you go down that path for a year you spent roughly 365 days watching tv gaining no value for yourself or your family and you're still in in the same position whose fault is that that's your fault so my thing is guys understand what you want have your goals in place and that'll guide you and ground you because if you're grounded with your goals, all right, bro, I can party here on the weekend with my friends, but I got goals in place. Nah, bro, I'm good. I'm, I'm, you know what? When I'm done my goals, maybe. But for right now, I'm, I'm not doing that shit. I'm going to focus on my goals and achieve those goals. And as well, your cell phone, social media, we have a course called DMs on Demand. We talk about using Instagram correctly for business and for dating. Some of you guys go on Instagram, waste hours looking at girls, doing dumb shit. And I'm like, bro, you're still working your regular job. You're broke. Like, what's wrong with you? So it's about priorities, man. And guys, no one's going to save you. My mentioned earlier, a hot girl will be saved. But you? Oh, bro, you're 30, 27 plus, and you're a guy and you're broke? You're a joke, bro. Nobody cares. Your mom might care a little bit, but, like, other niggas don't care. And it's like, what are your priorities? So offer it, guys. I'm going to just keep a thousand with you. Color distractions. Guys, I didn't have a TV in my room until recently. Like, I was so focused, guys, that, like, I want to know distractions, which means TV is a distraction. You bring a chick over, turn TV on. Let's watch a movie. Bro, did you earn that movie? Did you earn watching that time, uh, spending time with our girl? Nope. No. You were out doing dumb shit, and they say, oh, you know what? Work's finished. I'm just going to have fun, but I'm still living paycheck to paycheck. Whose fault is that? It's your fault. Yeah. Um, guys, uh, you got to cut out alcohol, drugs, TV, video games, women. You got to cut all this shit out, right? Mm. When you're when when you're developing yourself, because the things it takes, right, to get the most girls inherently are distracting and will hurt your ability to earn more money. Because let's be honest here, you want to get girls, you got to talk to a lot of bitches. You got to talk to a lot of bitches. That takes quite a bit of time. Going on dates, trying to close. You might take what you know. You might have to take girl on one or two or three dates, depending on your you know skill set, right? Video games. We all know a bunch of you guys burn a lot of time playing fucking video games. TV, another burn, right? Whether it's watching sports, watching a, some dumbass Netflix show, TV show, w- waste a lot of time. Drugs and alcohol. I mean, that hmm. goes without even fucking saying. Everybody, like, yo, as a man, right? Your job is to perform. All right. So if I put a gun to your head and I told you, yo, listen, bro. I need you to perform and make money, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you, you got to drink every day. You got to do drugs. You got to deal with girls. You got to do all this other shit, but I got to get to your head and you got to perform. Would you, st- would you put all those, you know, v- crazy variables into the equation, knowing that your life depended on it and being successful? Mm. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you would not do any of that shit. If I put a gun to your head and said, succeed or die, 
You would not do any of that stuff. You would be focused. You'd wake up early. You wouldn't have a fucking TV in your room. You wouldn't be watching sports. You wouldn't be chasing after bitches that don't give a fuck about you. You'd be working more hours. You would do everything in your power, right, to survive, right? You'd want it. You you'd work as hard. You would care about working hard just like you want to fucking breathe until you understand that mm. money is damn near like oxygen. We talk about this with Brandon Carter, right? That's when you're going to start to take shit seriously. Again, guys, men and women are not equal. A woman that's a pothead is not the same as a man that's a pothead. A woman that wants to go ahead and party on weekends and have cocaine is not the same as a fucking guy that wants to do that shit. When she goes ahead and does it, other people pay for it. When you go ahead and do it, you pay for it. Not only do you pay for it right then and there with your own cash and time, but then the next day when you feel like shit, your productivity is fucking done. And as a man, if your productivity is done, guess fucking what? Your ability to create is hindered. And once your ability to create is hindered, your attraction level goes down. Okay? You can't do the same shit as women. Sorry. Like, men and women are different, bro. There's a double standard that doesn't benefit us. We must perform. They don't. So why the fuck are you going to put a bunch of distractions in your life that's going to fuck you up and only make you less attractive, make you broker, make you live a life of misery? You party. All the guys that I know, right? In my 20s, guys, between um, in college, I didn't party like that because I was a Division One athlete. We weren't season year round. Hey, could have party like that. I drank less in college than I did as an adult. All right? Then I got a job with the government. Can't do drugs, right? Kept me away from a lot of stupid shit. And I played sports in high school, right? This was all great because they always say, um, idle hands do the devil's work. My, my college coach used to always say that shit to me. And it is so true, man. You need to distract yourself with proactive things and being productive. Yeah. As men, we are designed to create. That's what we do. And if you don't create, that's when you get depressed and sad about your life because you know deep down, I'm a fucking loser. And it's your fucking mindset. Like it's it's like a knee-jerk reaction from, from your, your masculinity smacking you in the face, like, what the fuck are you doing? You need to do something. What the fuck are you doing? Why are you still here? Why are you smoking pot? Why are you drinking alcohol? Why no one fucking respects you? You need to fucking get your life together. That's why a lot of you guys face depression. You do it because of your own inadequacies. It's your it's your mind reminding you that you need to get out there and fucking perform. But to live in this fucking cloud world nowadays, where we tell guys, it's okay, man. You could be a loser. It's okay, man. You could be fat. You know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, getting in touch with your feminine side. You could go ahead and be vulnerable with your girl. A bunch of fucking bullshit, man. None of this stuff works. <laughs> these girls talk about toxic masculinity and all these assholes and insecure, blah, blah, blah. Those are the guys getting the bitches, okay? Because they're insecure of where they stand in the world and they want to become better. You should always be insecure. Not with your bitch, but where you stand in the world of becoming a better man. That's how it's got to be. And video games, alcohol, drugs, television, all this bullshit, it, all it does is it makes you feel more secure. That's not what you want. You need to learn how to become uncomfortable being un being. You need to learn how to be comfortable being uncomfortable, guys. All right? Because when you're uncomfortable, I know that you're growing to some degree. I, I, I know someone's going to say in the chat, but Myron Fresh, I'm watching your show. Is that not wasting time too? No, idiot. If you're watching our show, you get value. And with the value, you get motivated. You get inspired, and as well, you can actually apply it in real life, guys. You better be listening to us in the fucking gym or driving Facts, to work bro. or some shit like that. Like you're you 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 at your desk right now, headphones in. I right, bet I'm motivated as fuck right now. I'm tired of working this job. You know what? How do I get there? Watch this episode. Watch other episodes. Monday Mondays. It's motivation and applicable information, guys. You watching cat videos on YouTube? Bro, Memes. really? Really? What? You watching dumbass like, bro? What right, the no, fuck? no offense, bro, but like to me, watching sports if you're not playing it, it's kind of dumb. Now. That's my Stupid. opinion. Take a, take, I agree. Like, take how you want, bro. But like, bro, watch the sports. You're not getting paid. They're getting paid. It's retarded. You are making no money. It's a feeling you get. Oh, they won. Yay. Nigga, you didn't, you didn't gain shit. You, 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 you gain a feeling. That's it. So my thing is, guys, that luxury of watching sports and having fun is for people that have made it in life. If you're still broke and you're still struggling, bro, you don't deserve to watch anything like that, bro. I went viral. I said, yo. Don't fuck you. None of you should be playing video games or doing this other shit unless you make six figures a year. Yeah. And that stands. Literally. I stand on that shit. If you're not making six figures a year, you have not earned the privilege of having a TV in your room, fucking watching sports, playing video games. None of this shit. If you're not making six figs, you need to go back to the fucking drawing board and figure out what the fuck you're doing. Because if you're playing video games, but you're not making six figures a year, I know you have way too much fucking free time. And it may sound extreme to most people, but like, bro, if you want to be successful, you have to take extreme measures. And that would me even cutting family off, friends off. It's like, bro, this is going to take up most of your life. If you're not ready to do, the, do these tasks, then stay broke. It's, it's on you. It's your choice. You know what? Let me say this, too, because I didn't get to say I forgot to say this. Guys, I sacrificed my fucking 20s from 
19, mm -hmm. right, all the way to 28 when I moved to Miami, I was just working, going to the gym, abstaining from alcohol, never did a fucking drug in my life, working for the government, making my money, saving my money. I was in fucking Laredo, Texas, fucking desert, ain't nothing out there, all right? Most people don't even speak English out there, all right? It was a culture shock for me. I was not whole, I was not close to home whatsoever. I just focused on work. I focused on, you know, being the best agent I can be, doing wiretaps, arresting people, doing big cases, all that stuff. That's why I speak from such an educated standpoint when I talk about criminal cases. I've done so many different types of cases because I sacrificed my fucking 20s, guys. I became an agent at 23. I didn't move to Miami until I was 28. Those five years in Texas, those years in college, I sacrificed my, my, my 20s, man. It is what it is. And I'm glad I did. Because your peak as a man comes later on in life. Yeah. All right. You must sacrifice something to get something. That's the way the world fucking works. If you want to become financially free, become successful, have a certain mindset, you must fucking suffer as a man. That's how it fucking goes. No one respects you if you don't. You must suffer. So if you want to go through your 20s and party and have fun and be with all the thotties and yeah, woo, life is great. I promise you're going to pay for it later. 100%. I promise you. And the problem that sucks is that when you do get older and you're paying for it later, you might not have the time, the ability, or the resources, or the energy to get out there and work at the same level when you're in your fucking 20s. You build the foundation in your fucking 20s so that you don't suffer in your fucking 30s. Because if you put it off and you do suffer in your 30s, it's going to be a lot harder to be that, have that same level of productivity as you did in your 20s, man. People always say, yo, my refresh, I want to be like you guys when I grow up. I'm like, nigga, you already grown. You got to decide from now, like, okay, cool. I got party my whole 20s. But then, what do you have to show for it? A, a wristband? Some pictures of, with some bitches? Is, is, is that it, bro? <laughs> is that it? Because that's not enough, bro. Like, or you can work, work on yourself, work on your goals, have property, have family, have assets, have things that actually matter to you in life. What's important to you? A fun time with your friends or helping your family out and friends with money, success, and a passion and purpose. In my 20s, from 23 to 28, guys, you know what I did? I would go home to Connecticut and see my friends once to twice a year only. That would be the time I would party and drink or whatever. But every seven, eight months, I'd go back home and, and see my friends and hang out. But I did that twice a year, and I did that for years. And it allowed me to be super productive, allowed me to be super focused. I was able to do the, some of the biggest cases in the office. I was able to <clears throat> get in the gym, get in the best shape of my life. And I just sacrificed my 20s, and I'm glad I fucking did it. Yeah. I'm looking back now at 32 years old. I am so fucking glad I did it because now I'm kind of, you know, I'm chilling a little bit more now versus I would have still be, I mean, I'm still grinding. It is what it is. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to y'all. You're working but, smart though. You're yeah, working, but yeah, working but smart. I'm not, it's not the same fucking grunt work. It's yeah. not the blood money that it used to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So guys, I'm telling y'all, man, like you gotta fucking understand that at some point in your twenties, you're going to have to sacrifice shit. Yeah. All right. You don't have the you did not earn the privilege of playing video games and do all, all this other fucking stupid shit, pornography, whatever the fuck a lot of guys do nowadays. If you or if you're not making at least six figures a year, if you're not, you got too much fucking free time. You need to get out there, get a second job, get a side hustle, make more fucking money. All right. Get in the gym. A lot of you guys are fat as fuck. Unacceptable. Dad bots are not acceptable. The girls say that bullshit. Oh, yeah, I like a dad bod. Fuck out of here. No, you don't, bitch. Stop lying. Stop fucking lying, man. They say that shit because they're fat themselves and they don't want to be judged. But if you put a guy that's in shape versus a fucking guy that has a dad bod and you told her, hey, bimbo, pick one, she go with the guy in shape, bro. What the fuck? And if she does go with the fucking dad bod, she'll deal with him and tolerate his ass, but then she'll cheat on your dumb ass with the guy in shape. That's facts. Why not just be the complete package? Why the fuck you got to be have a dad bod and have some money, maybe have some things in place, and then she's going to look for those other things in another guy. Be the fucking complete package, man. Diversified. And it happens every single day. You work towards it. Perfect. It never ends. All right, we got some more chats here. And then last point. Uh, never Worried says, yay, motherfucker, yay. <laughs> money Monday is where the real value is. We got y'all only on, uh, let's see here. Where we at? Uh, Mario, do you manage all your tenants directly or do you have real estate agents to handle all that? If you do manage them directly, do you juggle the time between uh, attending to them and things you do on YouTube, et cetera? Okay, the, good question. Uh, I have a property managers. I got two property managers, okay? And that's from top only. Top so only. They, they manage all my tenants for me. But during the day, guys, I'm pretty much on the phone all day with my real estate agent looking for deals, trying to close deals, et cetera. Uh, never worry, 20 bucks. Uh, boys, money is easy to attain. It's readily available to everyone. Even the homeless man has money like it's abundant, okay? Yep, same, you, make some money. If you want it, yeah. I work at the bank. I can't tell you how many grown men like 30s barely trying to start their credit and be asking for like 100K credit lines to start a business. That's from Memo F. Yeah, you ain't going to get it. You ain't going to get it. That's why Rough. it's so important to have good credit, bro. 
I will take having good credit over a million dollars in the fucking bank. That's how important credit is to procuring assets because guess what? If you got money in the bank, but you got no credit score or shitty credit score, the banks aren't going to give you nothing. You have to buy a cash. Okay. And if you buy a cash, well, eh, that's an L for you because now, right? You spent up all your capital versus if you did have good credit, that million dollars, you could have split it four ways, five ways to, between different properties. And now you own multiple assets that are a bigger tax that allow, allow you better um, tax mitigation. There's something called opportunity costs. If you spend all your cash in one asset, then you're screwed. Yeah. yeah. Now, are there exceptions where you can spend cash and buy a house cash and it makes sense? Yes, absolutely. And we I talked about that on another podcast. But in general, you want to use other people's money to procure assets, guys. Yeah. That's how the rich stay rich. Very true. Why don't dudes watch the early shows? Nothing but value and wisdom being dropped. 5.5K watching. Get the likes up, people. Yo, traffic was crazy in Miami over the weekend. Reminded me of LA. People recognize the merch in Miami. Keep leading from the front, gentlemen. Thank you so much. DLC. DLC. <laughs> Uh, Monko, uh, Monko. Take the video uh, to, to be debt-free debt like, for life. life. Yeah, Did you see Jay? Monko, yeah bro. Monko. Consumer debt is unacceptable. If y'all got a bunch of credit card consumer debt, you need to fucking get rid of that shit immediately, Facts. bro. Because these credit card companies are fucking destroying you Finessing, bro. They, 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 you, Daily. Look, I want y'all to go ahead and take a look at what the interest rate probably is. I guarantee you it's somewhere between 17 all the way up to 30% on some of these credit cards that you guys have. Chris, bring the article real quick. Yep. Uh, from uh, MS. And then I'll read and, this. Uh, FNF, what one? are your thoughts or experiences on buying into a franchise? Would you suggest becoming uh, becoming a franchise or investing in real estate for upcoming recession? Bro, I had a dream of owning a Chick-fil-A, bro. That niggas made money, bro, no matter what. Recession or not, Chick-fil-A is solid. It's very difficult to get one, though. Yeah, it's tough. You have to. There's like a waiting list. No, I, I used to work for Chick-fil-A, so I know all the requirements. Yeah. I, nigga, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, this is fast, 63 guys. 63% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, including nearly half of six figure earners. And they are in debt, guys. Bro. Credit card debt, a lot of debt. You know, and the thing too about a lot of six figure earners, guys that make that, you know, and women too, especially, that make that 100 to 150K per year, y'all are rich poor. Yeah. And what I mean by that is like, you're making enough money to get a taste of luxury, but you're not making enough to maintain said luxury. All right. And a lot of people that earn that kind of money, nurses, doctor, uh, doctors, lawyers, et cetera, a lot of them, even though they make that money, they'll still live beyond their means. They'll go ahead and try to buy the thirty thousand roll a thirty thousand dollar Rolex. They'll drive around the fucking you know S class Mercedes or the five series or sorry the seven series BMW. Yeah. Right. But the reality. <laughs> Wait, nurse. Is, yeah, nurse. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like that one girl that said, "Oh, I quit being a nurse because I couldn't make it." Remember the girl that did OnlyFans? Yeah, it's and, easier. Yeah, but but bro, like you live making six figures in New York, you could definitely live on that. But she wanted a certain lifestyle of of extreme luxury, and she couldn't make it. So she said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna." Go ahead and do OnlyFans, which is fine. That's her personal choice. But it just goes to show you guys that most Americans live way beyond their fucking means, bro. Yeah, and like, you don't need it. The Okay, so fun fact. Greg Cardone mentioned it like a, a couple years ago. The, the middle class is dying for that exact reason. They live beyond their means and they lose their job. It's a wrap. Everything's under, underwater. So I'm just saying off rip, bro. Keeping up with the Joneses seems fun, but it's not fun at all. Because when it's all said and done, what do you have to show for it? Nothing. Yep. It's just just a lot of debt. Yep. It ain't, it ain't so, worth it, man. Yeah. It really isn't. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Last point here, guys. Last one here. And the girls are here. Final round. Final round. So find a mentor in person or online. So people say all the time, bro, how to find a mentor, bro? Like, dude, man, like, this is hard, bro. Like, I don't know how to find a mentor. Bro, it's as simple as going to YouTube, watching some of these videos and saying, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to study this person. What do they do for daily habits? Where do they go? Who do they, who do they uh, associate with? I don't know who this person is as an individual to find out if I want to follow them or not. And by default, you're going to find their habits, what they do for a living, and also well, well, their mindset. And having that online coach, you don't even talk to them in person at all. It could be online only, whereas you watch your videos, you learn, you apply, you get results. Guys, the bottom line is you need results. It doesn't matter if it's in person or offline, you need results to have them for you. So a mentor can cut your learning curve by half or even more. And with that knowledge, you get experience to get results. So guys, I don't want to hear fresh Myron. I want a mentor, but I don't know who to talk to. Go online, bro. YouTube, Rumble, wherever you can find a mentor. Dude, uh, you know what's funny? A lot of guys are like, yo, bro, I want to be like Andrew Tate. Study Andrew Tate. <laughs> go to YouTube, go to Rumble, look at his content. All right, how to be like him. Learn, learn that way. You don't have to talk in person all the time. You don't have to. So, hey, man, fundamentals is not a hard, bro. I'm telling you right now.
Yeah. The other thing too is if you guys want to mentor, you got to be prepared to pay. That's it's very not true. Be cheap, right? So they've went through the trials and tribulations and figured it out so that you don't necessarily have to, and that's what you're paying for. You're not. You're paying to save time is what it comes down to. And let me tell you guys something very important as well. <sighs> Poor people spend time to save money. Rich people spend money to save time. Boom. Okay. Say again. Poor people spend time to save money versus rich people spend money to save time, right? And I would say intelligent people a lot of the times. So it's just that you got to know where to spend said money to save what to save time. Okay. Now, if you know you want to go ahead and get into a certain business endeavor that you don't know too much about, well, you're better off probably hiring a mentor that can help you shortcut the situation and figure it out. I'll give you guys an example. I didn't know shit about running an online fitness business or any of that other stuff. I was a fucking federal agent, bro. Well, I was too busy. I was more concerned with arresting people and figuring out how to, you know, uh, identify drug trafficking organizations, human smuggling, all this other shit, weapons trafficking. I was that, that was my expertise. But if I wanted to start a fitness business, well, I don't know what the fuck to do. So what did I do? I hired Brandon. Brandon taught me. I figured it out. Was able to scale up a business in less than a year to six figures online fitness business. And you paid. Guy that, and I paid. It cost me thousands of dollars. You just say, oh, Brandon, mentor me for free, bro. I got you. You fuck paid. No. I paid. And it was quite a bit of money for me at that time, and it was a risk. But guess what? When you pay money, then you start to pay attention. Facts. That's another thing, too. It's psychology. When you spend 5K, 10K, 20K, whatever, on mentorship, well, guess what? You're going to pay a lot of fucking attention. You're going to actually take all the steps required to become successful. <laughs> it's amazing what spending your own money and your own capital does for you. Okay? So I said, yo, I will not fail. Went ahead, got the coaching, went through all the modules, uh, went to the, the weekly meetings, figured out how to make money uh, as, a, as a personal trainer online. Started my fitness business, LLC did it up, scaled it up to six figures. I doubled my income with the government. Was making like 300K per year back in like 2019. Bam. Okay. Which is broke boy money now. But either way, <laughs> doesn't matter. But either way, oh, that money, that extra 100K per year, right, allowed me to go ahead and pay my student loans off, pay off all my credit card debt. It freed me up to increase my credit score. Guess what I did after that? When I did leave the government, my credit score is damn near 800. So I was able to start immediately getting into real estate investing. All right, getting good interest rates. A couple of my houses, guys, I was able to get a 3% interest rate. Sheesh. You ain't going to fucking find that shit anymore. Of course, I, it was an opportunity, right? The rates were low. Everyone's, uh, you know, the real estate market was hot. People were overcharging, whatever. But I was able to find a couple of deals and get a goddamn good interest rate. But the only reason I was able to pounce on it and take that opportunity was because my fucking credit was good. I'm telling you guys, your credit score, you got to protect it with your fucking life. That's how you actually build wealth is through credit, man. Yeah, and in the Matrix... You're, you're a number, but your score means something. So it's what it is, man. And if you don't, that's fine. Go ahead. Have a shitty credit score. <laughs> you're going to be stuck buying fucking Ethereum <laughs> and Apple stock for the rest of your life, motherfucker. <laughs> that's what you're going to be stuck doing. You're going to have to go into asset classes that are extremely volatile, and you don't have the benefit of getting a tax liability, a, a tax mitigation, and you also... <clears throat> You're dependent upon the fucking liquid markets. Yep. And you got to buy stuff cash too. And you got to and you gotta buy it all the way. Yep. Like you got to actually own it, buy it cash. You can't use other people's money. So that's the price you have to pay when you don't have good credit. You got to buy, quite frankly, inve investments that aren't as tried and true. Mm -hmm. Right? You guys might say, oh, Myron, you buy us, whatever. Guys, I have silver. I have r real estate. I have cryptocurrency. I have stock. I'm in, in index funds. I'm everywhere. But I'll tell you guys this. By far, real estate is the number one asset class. It's, it, it, and that's a fucking fact. Between the tax benefits, the cash flow, um, uh, being able to do cash out refinance without getting hit with taxes, you can't get none of that on Ethereum or fucking stock and market. I just spent like 50K in rehabs, but I'm about to raise the rent to a big amount. So by default, I'm going to make my money back in like and if you wanted a year to, and a half. You spent 50K fixing the house up. Yeah. You could do a cash out refinance, pull all that fucking money out yep. tax free and use it to go buy another house. Facts. It's worth something. And, and you got a huge tax benefit from that 50K now. Exactly. That he spent. Now he's going to probably, he is going to owe way less of taxes off of spending that 50000 on that house. Yeah. So, guys, again. Leverage, man. Success leaves clues. 95% plus of millionaires made their millions in real estate. There's a fucking reason for that. I'll never forget, bro. I can't say America for the first time. I was at Starbucks learning about um, YouTube, marketing, all that stuff. And the guy pulled up in a Lamborghini with a hot check. I'm like, damn, who's this nigga? Like, I feel like I'm, I was like, kind of like, damn, why him, not me? And I was like, you know what? Let me ask him what he does because maybe he might tell me what he does and I could do the same thing to make be, to become successful. So I said, swallow my pride. Hey, man, I'll start to bother you, bro. I'm just curious, bro. Nice car. What do you do? I do real estate. I invest, I, I'm a big investor here in Florida. I um, have properties in Columbia as well, but I invest a lot, a lot of my money into real estate. I'm like, wow. So that sparked my interest level of, okay, cool. What's, what, what, 
I actually want to learn real estate. YouTube did from Graham Stephan, from Bigger Pockets, from Greg Cardone, and now we're here today. Yep. One question. That's it. Yeah, man. I, I guys, like I said, I want you guys to be diversified, though. Yeah. Obviously, me and Fresh love real estate. Yeah. But you know, you got to be in everything. I'm just telling you that real estate gives you more perks from a tax benefit, and on top of that, you can only get it if you have good credit, though. And I don't want you guys being like these fucking crypto guys, only buying Ethereum and only buying stocks because your credit sucks and you can't buy a house. <laughs> You know what I mean? I want you guys to be able to be at least in a position where you're choosing not to buy real estate because because you don't want to. Not you can't buy real estate because you can't since your credit sucks at all. All right, guys. So get your credit up. Get real estate. Get cryptocurrency. Get in the stock market. Get an index funds. Get in every asset class, precious metals, everything. And stop living paycheck to paycheck. Don't do it, guys. It ain't worth it. Hey. Make more money. The number one way to get away from living paycheck to fucking paycheck is making Make more, more money, money while simultaneously bringing down your costs, not buying a bunch of dumb shit. You guys fucking out here buying a bunch of uh, Molestiaga and Christian Dior and all this other fuck shit. <laughs> y'all can't even afford it. Like, what the fuck? Stupid. You spend your entire paycheck on a pair of sneakers. What the fuck Stupid. is going on here? Damn. You spend all your money to impress people that you don't care about, that don't care about you, to look fashionable when you got no fucking money in the bank. What the fuck is going on, man? Like, none of y'all should be buying designer unless you got at least six months to one year savings in your fucking account. Bro, and you're making six figures per year. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't, I don't even buy designer anymore myself. It's a fucking waste. Yeah, it's a waste. It's a waste of fucking money. At least Fresh can write it off. Y'all can't. <laughs> what the fuck is going on here, man? <laughs> you guys buying this designer for free, wearing it, giving them free advertising. They don't give a fuck about you guys. Make your own brand. Uh, hey, Myron, make 100K a year, marry three kids. How do I get into real estate? Rumble. Uh, Rumble. And, and, that, and Rumble he's over from Rumble. Kick a pone. Uh, bro, talk with your real estate agent, get pre-qualified, and then start looking at houses. Figure yeah. out what your credit score is. Yeah, good point. All right. I would I would say don't even bother looking at houses unless your credit score is what? 720 bare minimum? Get approved first, though. Yeah. Check well, yeah, he's got to get a pre-approval. Yeah. But yeah. That, they'll tell him what his credit S- score is. 720 minimum. But yeah, I, I, honestly, bro, so, work towards 750, 760. So the best rate, 720, 740, you should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it worked, yeah. Well, no. Well, it depends on the credit because some people 760 is considered excellent, some others are 740. Oh yeah, you're right. Because there's so 720, cur- 760. Yeah, that should be the range. Yeah, yeah. Get in that range, and you'll be you'll be in a competitive situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where because the goal, guys, is to have your credit score so good that people want to do business with you, and other banks want to give you money. And what that allows you to do is say, hey, listen, U.S. Bank is giving me four percent. Hey, Bank of America is giving me six percent. Yo, this guy's giving me three and a half percent. Can you beat that? Can you beat that? And then bam, now it puts you in a position of power where they're competing to lend you money. Yeah. Okay, because guys, trust me, the <laughs> bank, dirty little secret, I said it before, I say it one more time for y'all, the bank will give you a loan to buy a fucking real estate property, but they will not give you a loan to buy stock in their own goddamn bank. Oh, shit. Let that sink in. They will give you a loan, 80% of the value, all right, or 75% of the value. They'll give you a loan to buy a fucking house, but they will not give you a loan to buy stock in their own bank. That should tell you all you need to fucking know. I wonder why. Gotcha, or just random thought. Yeah, there mm. you go. The banks will never tell you that, will they? No, they won't. All right, last shot. All right, Joe? my super chat was skipped. I'm 29. We'll do a little over 100K this year, but thinking about starting a YouTube channel, would you consider mentoring someone entering the space for payable course? Not looking for anything for free. Yes, we're going to make a course, guys. And that's from a Joe. A full YouTube me. course on how to do a podcast. How to start a YouTube channel. Since everyone to wants to it. copy us anyway. <laughs> yeah, we got you guys, Since man. all y'all want to copy us anyway, let us yeah. teach you how to do it properly. Facts. <laughs> okay, the real shit. Right? Not what you just uh, see on, everyone on, try to, on uh, camera. Everyone to copy our shit, man. So, yeah. okay, cool. We got y'all. We're going to actually teach y'all how to do it. All right? Uh, all right, cool. With that said, guys, guys, like the video on the way out. Guys, right? W in the chat, man. W, w in the, the show, chat. bro. Hope you guys enjoyed a lot of value on that one, man. We gave y'all five steps to stop living fucking paycheck to paycheck. Stop being a broke boy. We'll catch you guys back here with some lovely ladies. Uh, what time, Chris? Call uh, it. 945. 945. Cool. Let's we'll do be it. back here in about an hour, guys. Peace. Peace. I ran, I ran so far away.